Local advocacy groups are challenging an order by President Trump to exclude unauthorized immigrants from this year's census count. If the order is upheld, it would affect decisions on federal funding and representation in Congress. The order is being contested in a lawsuit brought for the groups by Lawyers for Civil Rights. To tell us about the suit is its staff attorney, Lauren Sampson. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Lauren. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Lauren, well, on first face, this sounds at least maybe less threatening to immigrants th than the earlier idea from President Trump, which was to sort of try to uh, specify whether someone being counted is an American citizen. But how would this uh, new policy, if it went into effect, actually um, be, be, be harmful? So Lawyers for Civil Rights is concerned about the July 21st memorandum in which President Trump purports to exclude undocumented immigrants from the census count for a couple reasons. First, with this open declaration that undocumented immigrants are not persons and do not count, the president has essentially disincentivized large swaths of the immigrant community from filling out the census, right in the midst of the ongoing count for Census 2020. And especially in places that are still significantly undercounted, places Places like Chelsea or Boston or Lawrence, that can have a real harmful impact. If folks continue to believe that they should not fill out the census, and that's a logical assumption given the president's open declaration, then those communities would be severely undercounted and that wouldn't be rectified by the end of the count in October 2020. In addition, we're concerned that the president aims to use faulty or incomplete data to determine who actually is an undocumented immigrant. Of course, without the decennial census asking any questions about immigration status, the uh, records that we have to determine who actually is an immigrant are really incomplete. We have to rely on sampling from the American Community Survey, whatever records the administration has been able to get from other agencies. And so whatever conclusion the president draws about who actually is an authorized immigrant might not actually even be accurate, meaning that folks who are documented immigrants might be excluded when they actually shouldn't be. Can you explain the effects of um, this order uh, on federal funding potentially? Absolutely. So the uh, census decennial, the decennial census count um, provides what's known as the congressional apportionment base. Those numbers are given to Congress, and that number is used for both allocation of representatives to the states, but also the allocation of over $1.5 trillion in federal financial assistance to the states for over 100 census-linked programs. And so that encompasses everything from heating assistance for low-income people to highway maintenance and transportation to block development grants that go to states and cities to SNAP and Medicaid and Head Start, so many different programs that rely on the census count to determine how much money actually needs to be sent to the states. And so an undercount might mean that the communities that are reeling most from COVID-19 and that need significant financial investment for things like workforce development or Title I schools won't get the money that they're entitled to. Now, if, if the only thing uh, that mattered here were political arguments. I can certainly imagine Trump and his supporters saying, well, we, we don't want to reward cities and states that are permissive around immigration. Uh, but what would you say to that? I think there's a couple of responses there. First, the Constitution itself is clear. The fourth sentence of the Constitution specifies that the enumeration must count all persons. And in the second clause of the 14th Amendment, which modified that article, again, the specification was used that persons must be counted, not citizens. And that's an intentional choice. The 14th Amendment defines what citizenship is, all persons born or naturalized in the United States. And the decisive, conclusive choice to use persons rather Rather than citizens speaks volumes. For decades, for, for centuries at this point, that's the metric that's been used. Of course, children can't vote, but we nonetheless count children in our decennial census and for the purposes of congressional apportionment, because to not count children would mean, again, uh, cities, states not getting the federal funding they need and not having the political representation to which they're entitled. I think to look at this as a reward to cities and states is to overlook the reality that cities and states are already providing these services to everyone and that an undercount would again harm the total population, not just those undocumented immigrants. Well, there are other uh, experts out there who say uh, um, you would probably win this case uh, at the first level in court, but maybe the administration will take it to another level and there could be a stay in that decision. So in other words, this could be in limbo 
for a while. What would that mean? We at Lawyers for Civil Rights are pushing for as speedy a resolution of this question as possible because, of course, the count is ongoing. And every day that the memorandum lingers out there telling undocumented immigrants that they do not count is a day in which uh, the census count is depreciated and folks are being chilled. So we are urging the, our court, as well as courts around the country in which these lawsuits have been filed, to act with all urgency to resolve this question. And we are hopeful that federal courts will take up this challenge and issue speedy rulings, uh, finding this memorandum to be, as it indisputably is, unlawful and unconstitutional. Well, if you rewind to uh, when Trump was challenged for trying to count citizens, uh, um, his rationale was that he was trying to protect voting rights. Now, if you look at what he's doing, I mean, isn't there some inconsistency there? One of the arguments that we made in our complaint was that as Justice, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts noted in his decision on the citizenship question, that rationale, protecting and enforcing the Voting Rights Act, was clearly pretextual and a distraction. This memorandum makes clear that the intention all along was to exclude immigrants from the census, to make it harder for them to count, to chill them from participating, and to depreciate the political power of communities of color, immigrant communities, and blue states. This is just another one in a long series of decisions seeking to strike fear into the hearts of immigrant communities and prevent them from achieving the political representation and financial resources to which they are entitled to. Maybe you can unpack that a little bit because you have the, the four groups in the Boston area who were really you, what you're representing in this suit. Uh, is there an urgency they feel about this issue right now? Absolutely. Our client communities have told us on several occasions that they are seeing people chilled from filling out Census 2020 before their eyes. For example, Haitian Americans United has been running food pantries to support families experiencing food insecurity during the pandemic. During uh, the food pantry pickup, they will ask families in line to fill out Census 2020. And they heard as recently as Friday from families in line, why would we fill out the census? We're not going to do that. We heard about what the president said in the news where he doesn't want immigrants to fill it out. So that's happening in real time. So our, as even as our community groups are investing time and resources, trying to get out the count, trying to convince immigrant communities that this census is safe, confidential, and necessary, the president is undermining that work. And so for now, I think these, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. I, because you, I, you, you're explaining about the, the attitude of fear. And so on, on, on the part of these community members, they're seeing you know, over a year's worth of work investing in the census, trying to talk to immigrant communities about its importance, just being undermined before their eyes by the president's words and deeds. Right. Now, I, I, I did mention unauthorized immigrants, but we're talking about excluding not only them, but people who have legal status. Uh, and I imagine they feel the same fear too? So the president's memorandum is restricted to undocumented immigrants, but in a practical sense, many immigrants in Massachusetts and across the country live in mixed status households where maybe some members of the household are documented, others are undocumented, some are citizens, some are not citizens. And we have every reason to believe that this will chill both. If you are, for example, the US citizen child of undocumented parents, it's very unlikely that you're gonna fill out the census just to reflect the presence of two US citizen children and just leave the parents off of the questionnaire, not only because that would draw red flags from the Census Bureau, but also because the children will be afraid of casting light upon their parents' situation. So we expect the effects of this memorandum to reverberate far beyond the undocumented immigrants that the president claims he exclusively wants to exclude. Well, uh, going beyond immigrants, um, what about the public at large and what the public, what the American public thinks of as normal? How do you see that being affected by this move? We certainly see that in communities that have a large immigrant population, the effects of this will reverberate onto the citizenry at large. Take, for example, the city of Chelsea. We know that in decennial census after decennial census, Chelsea is perpetually undercounted. And the undercounting for Chelsea it impacts not just the undocumented population, nor indeed just the immigrant population, but the citizen population as well, who are not only seeing their a particular district receive fewer um, political representatives than it might otherwise be entitled to, but also receive less funding for services like transportation, hospitals, or schools. And so if you live in a 
community that has a large number of immigrants and those immigrants weren't counted, the political power of your uh, community is going to be diluted in ways that impact you as well. Perhaps you might have been entitled to, you know, your own representative at the state level, but now because the immigrants in your community haven't been counted, you have to share a representative with another community, diluting your ability to contact your representative to see your particular needs met and represented. Um, <clears throat> and to make your concerns uh, heard at the level of your state, city, or local government.